There is a lot of Johnny Walker whiskey on the market and it can be really confusing to people what should you buy? What should you spend your money on? Particularly if you're just getting into your whiskies and you see all these various labels, what's the difference? Which are the good ones? Which are the ones that you should spend your money on? And which are the ones that you really should avoid? Well, if you're in that situation, then stick around because this video might just answer that question. Here on the top shelf I have a litany of Johnny Walker bottles and I've reviewed all of these. That's a lot. And below me I have an empty shelf. How this is going to work is going from worst to best I'm going to tell you about these Johnny Walker whiskies, and I'm going to move them down and arrange them in the order going from worst to best. So by the end of this video you'll know which is the one that I think you should be spending your money on. So we'll kick off with what I think is the one that you should probably, definitely, absolutely avoid. I'm not going to make any friends amongst Diageo amongst this one, I would imagine, but hey-ho, let's go for it. And it will probably come as no surprise to anybody that it is the 18-year-old. Formerly known as the Platinum Label, it does not earn that title in any way, shape or form. And it's not that I'm being unfair to this whiskey. I have given this whiskey plenty of chances. I've actually recorded three videos for this whiskey. Now, admittedly, one of them was a joke video, but still, each time I just, I could not get anything out of this whiskey. It's bland, flavourless almost, I'd go so far as to say. Now then, if you don't really want the flavour of anything, then yeah, this knocks it out of the park. One thing I will say is, for an 18 year old whiskey, this is dirt cheap, but it's still 50, 60 pounds, sometimes more. What you're paying for ultimately is the prestige of a nice bottle with the number 18 on it. The actual contents are not worth your money at all, and you can get better whiskies for a fraction of that price. And I think we're getting into an era now with alcoholic beverages overall. We're not wanting to drink more necessarily. We want to be a bit more responsible with our drinking habits. So I think this product's gonna start to struggle if they don't up their game with what they're putting into the blend a little bit. This is more my warning to Johnny Walker that this is the one they need to pay attention to and really look into what they're putting into the blend because I can't see this one doing well going forward. My next one is actually one I'm not going to be able to pull down because I didn't think about this whole shelf scenario. It's, it's this, it's the, the White Walker. I'm just going to bring it forward instead. I didn't think this through, clearly. This was a limited edition for the last series of Game of Thrones. I bought this purely to see what it was like. I don't even watch Game of Thrones. Um, I know. Sacrilege. It is predominantly Klein Leash heavy. Um, the main thing with this one was that it was plastered in all the marketing gubbins and I think Johnny Walker was expecting this whiskey to do a lot better than it ultimately did. Diageo spaffed a lot of money into a HBO tie-in. Um, you had Lagavulin's, you had Glendullins, you had all sorts of sort of core Diageo whiskies with the Johnny Walker theming all over it. I ended up trying the Oban and I ended up trying the White Walker and both were it's safe to say underwhelming. Um, this one, I, do you know what? I didn't hate it. In the right mood, I could get on board with it, but what really kind of knocked it for me was that it was clearly quite a cheaply made blend, going for a lot of money because of all the marketing onto it. It ends up this far down the list for me because it's a really cynical product. Um, and I, I think it's just quite disrespectful to consumers as a whole, um, just to be like, hey, we slapped your favorite show on this and put an inferior product in a bottle, money please. People did not respond to this whiskey or a lot of the other Game of Thrones whiskies. They've kind of gone down as a notorious backfire for the company. Um, so we can't expect to see any other tie-in whiskies. Like there's not gonna be the Crown blended whiskey or any of that kind of stuff coming up anytime soon. I think Diageo learned a hard lesson from that one, which was 
Okay, the show's popular. Slapping the name on something completely unrelated doesn't necessarily work. There was a gimmick with this as well. Um, I'll get the bottle down. There was a gimmick with this um, that you were supposed to put it in the freezer. Now that's a big old red flag right there because when you chill alcohol, the sensation of cold essentially numbs your tongue. So by saying that you want to freeze this, it's basically saying that the product is inferior and we know it's inferior and we're going to try and make that a selling point. And you know how they made it a selling point? They put thermoreactive ink on the bottle. So when you freeze it, um, the words winter is here comes up. You can actually kind of make it out anyway because of how it's printed. Um, the actual bottle itself, it's, it's just a, a wrap. Um, it's got like a, a plastic wrap around it. So it, it does kind of come across as quite cheap even though it's got kind of like the gimmicky fun thing um, and you've got the striding man done up like a white walker. Can I actually fit that on there? Oh, yes. There's probably not gonna be much room for anything else, but we'll leave that there for now as a, as a testament to cynical tie-in whiskey, I suppose. The next one off the list is the Red Label. This is the best-selling whiskey in the world, or rather it was last time I checked. It might have actually been pipped out by now. Um, it is a distribution giant. Um, it's sort of like the Coca-Cola of blended whiskey, really. It's everywhere. Um, loads of people drink it. It's commonly used in highballs and other mixed drinks. Um, again, Diageo are big onto their highballs at the minute, like mixing with teas and all sorts of interesting different ingredients. This is kind of like the the poster child for mixed drinks. Um, and there's a perfectly good reason for this. It's really bad. <laughs> um, it's notoriously bad. It's well known to be bad. So many people might be surprised that it's actually third from the worst. Um, certainly when I was going into the Johnny Walker experiences, blends, um, I was expecting the 18 year old to be quite a good one because it's 18 years old, man. How do you fuck that up? They can and they did. The red, I was always expecting to be bad. So I was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't undrinkably awful, as a lot of people make it out to be. Don't get me wrong, it's still a cheap and nasty product, it's still got loads of burn, it's kind of all over the place flavour-wise, and it's clearly meant for putting with something to try and dull the nasty, which is a pretty common thing when it comes to cheap and readily available alcohol. It's, it's designed to get you a bit fucked up, it's not designed to be a nice experience necessarily. That sounds really cynical and cruel, and there's a good reason for that. It is. Um, that having been said, I haven't despised this whiskey. Um, it's been a bit of an eye-opener. I'd never buy a bottle of it. But one of the things that it has allowed me to do, it has allowed me to see how much it's changed. This is a bottle of Johnny Walker from the 70s, and I did do a side-by-side -side comparison on these two. This is nectar by comparison. Don't get me wrong, it's not the best whiskey on the planet, but in comparison, it's incredibly good. Like, they are leagues apart from each other. So people that say that these blends are done to be consistent, they're not, because this is radically different. Admittedly, the stocks that go into this will be radically different as well, and it has been hanging around for a good while longer, but just the overall calibre of this light years ahead. Literal light years. It's like this is in the Alpha Quadrant and this is in the Delta Quadrant. Like it's nowhere near. A little bit of Star Trek fun for any of you Trekkies out there. I'm gonna pop this up here because it's not relevant to the video anymore. So following on from the red, which is the cheapest in this lineup, you might be surprised by the next entry. I think I'm giving it away a little bit by saying that. It's the blue label. This is Johnny Walker's premium blend, and it got a lot of mouth treatment, that's not the right phrase, publicity from the West Wing and other shows which tout it as a super premium whiskey. Um, there was a bit of confusion about the age around it. Um, it was embroiled in a, an argument over what can be classed as the age statement. Um, and this was one of the whiskies that kind of kicked that conversation off properly. Time was people thought that it was like 60, 70 year old whiskey. Um, it's now gone to a no age statement, which means that, you know, whilst there are some of the older stocks in there, there's not a lot. Um, having tried this, it's fine. But 
Considering the prestige and all the noise that's made by this whiskey and all the kind of like grandiosity of this is the royalty of the Johnny Walker range, it should be a lot better for all the bells and whistles and it kind of exemplifies the range um, or rather the direction the range is taking when it comes to sort of like luxury branding which is it's it's all fur coat and no knickers you know it's there's nothing going on underneath um, it's a, it's fine um, I'd never buy a full bottle um, and that kind of mirrors what I found with a lot of other people's experiences with this, was that they were left distinctly underwhelmed by the blue label. Um, it has spawned a couple of spin-offs, um, namely the Ghost and Rare series, um, which they've taken stocks from extinct distilleries or closed distilleries or ghosted distilleries, um, and they've kind of dunked a little bit of that into the blend. I would imagine not much, but the responses to those whiskies have actually been more positive, so maybe they're going in a better direction with those. I will also say they're also double the price of what this is, and this isn't exactly a cheap whisky to begin with. It's about £120 for a okay to mediocre whisky in a nice bottle with a certificate and like a nice box. But what you're paying for with that is again the image thing. It's got the same problem the 18 year old does. The liquid inside is okay does not justify the price that's being charged whatsoever. The only reason it's come this high up, really, is that the blend itself is actually relatively competent. It's like they gave a bit of a fuck about it, but it's still all about the presentation over any kind of substance of taste, smell, or any of other. Any of the drinking experience is secondary to how it's put forward. Um, it's very much the politician of whiskey. Following on from the blue, we have eh, the Black Label. This is one of the rare examples of Johnny Walker having a age statement. You've got the 12, you've got the 18, you've got the 15 with the green label. Um, this is actually a competent all-rounder, so we're going from the eh, don't really bother to the maybe give it a look kind of section. So everything from this point onwards is kind of, I, I wouldn't say no. Um, so we've gone from the don't waste your money side to maybe give it a punt if you want. Um, but this is on the lowest end of this. It's commonly available. The reason it doesn't get higher is that whilst the blend hasn't gotten any better, the price has started to really jump up on this. And I can see no explanation as to why. In terms of taste and smell, it starts to get left behind by contemporaries, but because it's got that 12-year-old age statement, I think Johnny Walker are getting a bit bold in themselves and being like, do you know what, we can, we can eke the price up here because the price of whiskey overall is going up, and even though this blend doesn't justify a price increase at all, because of the name, and because of how it's packaged, and because it comes off as more of a luxury good, they're able to add some of that money on, and it works. Um, I would say, if you see it on offer, it's not necessarily a bad purchase. And there is an element of nostalgia for that whiskey, for me, um, because it's the first whiskey that I tried that I didn't hate. I did have it with ice cubes, so that definitely helped, but it was Cadona's 2012 in Aberdeen. Um, i just won the presidency of a society, and we were like, let's go and figure out, and I was like, what's a presidential drink? I'll have a whiskey. And all they had was Johnny Walker, so I was like, I'll take that and I didn't hate it. So, going back to that, I was always kind of like, there's a nostalgia element to this in that it is a whiskey that I didn't actively hate. Moving up the list, it's kind of like a Sam Sparrow song in that we're going from black to gold. Anyone who's never listened to that song will have no idea what I just said. But this is the next one. Um, this, I actually rather like, to be honest, but there's a good reason for that. It's very Klein Leash heavy. Um, it's very buttery, very sweet. Um, it's no age statement. It didn't used to be, but it is now. Um, so it's become the gold label reserve. And do you know what? I would buy a bottle of this. I actually quite like it. Um, you have to be in the mood for it. You have to be in the mood for quite a waxy, sweet kind of a blend. And 
a lot of the Johnny Walkers suffer from this, which is that the grain component that's used in them is clearly not good stuff. It's definitely there to bulk it out as opposed to contribute to the blend in any way. Some blends, they try and use better grains to try and actually add to the flavor. Other ones, they're just like, it's booze, chuck it in, it'll do. Um, so whilst you do get lots of buttery sweet flavours with this, and it's actually quite delightful to drink, the grain does stamp its foot down every now and then. It's kind of like a noisy neighbour. Um, in that, you know, you're having a nice time and then every now and then you'll just hear like the thump of feet above you or something like that. You know, it's like, it's not enough to drive you away from it, but it's, it's irritating and it shouldn't be happening. And you kind of want it to stop. I'm not basing that off of any of my own experiences, of course. But yeah, the Gold Label Reserve, um, I dig it. I'm actually quite liking it. Um, again, a lot of that will be due to the fact that there is, it's clearly quite cleanly heavy, this blend, but it's grand. Um, and you should absolutely give it a go. I'm intrigued to know as well what people's experiences are with some of these blends. So if I've struck a chord with your experiences with these at any point, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Or do you think that, you know, I'm completely mad and insane for having them this way round? Following on from the gold is actually one that I can't put up on the lineup. Um, this was a recent one for me. Uh, this is the Sweet Peat. This was a competent blend, for certain. Um, why it's come this high up um, is that it's doing something a bit different. It's pretty approachable, around about £20 a bottle, uh, but you do only get a 500 ml for that. There is element of like a kind of a sugary, caramelly, butterscotchy kind of a flavour, and there is an element of peat, but it's not an overwhelming peat. So actually it's a good whisky for kind of testing the waters for are you a fan of peated whiskey or not? If you have this and you're not really into it, chances are it's probably going to be the peat element, so you know from that point onwards that there are certain whiskies you should maybe avoid, like Springbanks, Talisker's going forward into Ardbeg's and Laphroaig's, that kind of extreme end of smoke and peat as well. Um, it's clearly trying to edge off some of the market from like Fire and Cane and um, Ailsa Bay and stuff like that, but it's a combination that does work. Um, sweet and smoky have kind of an affinity with each other and mixologists have known this for a fair few years, so it's nice to see more liquids like this trying to capture that kind of dual nature, um, kind of like flavour combination, if you will. That's, that's more of the word, isn't it? Dual combination? That's, that's not something that people say. Um, the label's a bit sparse. It's a little bit understated, it's trying to be a bit more crafty. Um, but the overall flavours are actually good. They meld together quite well. They're a bit muted. I describe this as being a watercolour to Fire and Cane's oil painting. And I stand by that. It's, it's much more kind of like... more of a background note to the flavours. But it's a good introduction to those flavours if you want to kind of give it a go without investing in a more expensive bottle. Getting into the nitty gritty now, that was the bronze finish. So who gets the silver in second place? It's actually a bottle I don't have here anymore, so I've got a stand in. This is an 80s bottle of Johnny Walker Black Label, and this today is subbing in for the Double Black, a bottle which I don't have, and I wasn't gonna go and buy a big one on Amazon, despite the fact that I actually think, I mean, not this, but what it's representing, it's actually a pretty good blend. It was released for the travel market a fair few years ago, and it's a more peat heavy version of the Black Label. The Double Black doesn't have an age statement, and it's gonna be a very divisive yay or nay. There are people that love it, there are people that hate it. Big reason for that is that it's got a much heavier peat component. If you love peat and smoke, you're gonna adore that. If you hate it, it's probably gonna come closer to down here. So it's my second place with a big old asterisk on it to say that you might love it, you might not. It's one of those ones where you kind of just have to dive in and try it. But if you already know that you're not a big fan of peat and smoke, it's probably not going to be for you. I also really dig the bottle design. It comes in a beautiful like black bottle. Um, I've talked a lot about like the design work of the Johnny Walkers. They do do their bottles very well when I'm okay with it being there because the liquid is good, I don't have a problem. It's a happy bonus. When the liquid is poor and you're clearly just paying for the packaging, 
that's when I've got an issue with it. And the double black gets a really good balance of that. So that's my number two spot. It means the number one spot is kind of obvious because it's everyone's number spot because it is by far the best Johnny Walker whiskey that they produce. Like, there's not even a question on it. Everyone just kind of agrees on this point that the green label's the best. So in number one is the green label. Um, there's probably going to be some people that were watching this just to see if I didn't pick the green label. Of course I picked the fucking green label. It's head and shoulders above anything else Johnny Walker churn out. It disappeared from the market for a fair few years, and it's the whiskey that they don't include in their tasting packs, and I suspect that's because they know that if they include it with the rest of the tasting pack, people would be like, why is this middle one so much better than all the other ones put together? What's going on there? The green label itself has declined in quality, because Johnny Walker's overall is make a cheaper product but charge more for it and see how far we can take the piss basically um i'm just calling it as it is and the reason i know this is because i've had an opportunity to try some of the older stocks i've tried the older red label from the 70s which was phenomenal and i've even got um this came up just out of the blue one day it's a 20 cl of the green label before it was pulled off the shelves in 2012 so this is from like 2010, 2011, something like that. This runs rings around this. This is, this is incredible stuff. This is still good, but it's a shadow of this, which I think goes some way to say kind of where the entire range is. If this is the one that's topping out and I'm still saying it's not as good as it used to be, I think that says everything that you need to know about all the Johnny Walkers. Um, would I recommend the Johnny Walkers as a whiskey experience, they're useful and they're readily available, but you've got to be careful um, because they are they are more marketing than they are whiskey at this point, and you have to be aware of that. A lot of online reviewers will cozy up to Johnny Walker, and fair enough, they're good business, and you know they'll look after you if you're nice to them. But I don't think I'm being honest if I do do that. I could sit here and say, these are all amazing, and they'd probably be like, hey, do you want to partner with us? And I'd probably be set up for life. Well, not quite that far, but you know, I'd, I'd have a cozy couple of months at least. But I'm not, because I'd rather go down the honest route. Um, that being said, from here, I'd say, yeah, go for it. Spend your money. These are fine. And the green label, I did recently buy for my dad for Christmas. Um, because it is still a good blend. It's just not as good as it used to be. But those are my thoughts on the Johnny Walker range as they stand, plus a couple of um, more unusual bottles. There's a few bottles I've not had a chance to try, like the Swing, the Ghost of Rares, because they're prohibitively expensive, and the other two Game of Thrones ones, which are still kicking around, even though Game of Thrones wrapped up about three years ago now, which says something about the expectation versus reality of what they thought would happen versus how much they actually sold, because it's still around. Um, but let me know down below, do you have a favourite Johnny Walker? Do you agree with pretty much everyone else that the green is the best, but it's not as good as it used to be? Or do one of these ones ring your bell more? Thumb this video if you enjoyed it, and do please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more shenanigans of whiskey drinking. I will be doing the, um, the vintage Johnny Walker Black and comparing it to the modern version fairly soon, so if you want to check that out then make sure you ring the bell as well and you'll get notified when that video comes out for now though thank you very much for watching and do join me next time where i'll be drinking something else